Krauss. Uh, um, my name is Kaden Mazoke. I'm the author of the Distinction Bound Student textbooks. So we have grade 10, grade 11, and grade 12. All right, this lesson is lesson number 59 from the grade 12 textbook. All right, so when we teach, we follow this document. It's one of the most important documents, the examination guidelines. So you need to have a copy of this and uh, you need to follow it every, day, every time. Okay, so if we check here, I'm going to, that lesson that I'm teaching today comes from microeconomics. We have these four main topics. So I'm introducing perfect markets. And so this is in the examination guidelines. So it shows you exactly what you need to know. Okay, so what I'm going to point out is when you go through this document, whenever you see the underline and it says in detail, it means it's one of the chosen essay type questions. So this is one of the essay type questions. It tells you exactly what it is that you need to know. So we have two main, two essay type questions from this topic. So it's a very, very important topic. All right, so let's get down to lesson number 59 as promised. Right, this lesson, uh, I'm going to discuss market structure. So in this lesson, we are going to be talking about how we classify these markets. Okay, so for, for instance, we classify people in different ways. We, have, um, we can classify people by looking at gender, we can look at uh, height, we can look at weight, we can look at race, uh, or, or many other things. Now with markets, we have, according to our examination guidelines, we have these 12. So we are going to classify markets using these 12. Now you can see things like output in a textbook. Uh, don't worry about output because according to our examination guidelines, you don't need to worry about that. So you just need to stick to these 12. Okay, so I'm going to cover each and every one of them in this lesson. All right, so let's get started. We have four main, uh, we have four market structures. We have perfect competition, monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic. So let's start with um, the classification. Right, the first thing that we look at is number of firms. When we're looking at number of firms, we are saying uh, we, there are three possibilities. Firms can be many in an industry. Firms can be just a few. And firms, there can only be one firm. So in an exam, when they ask you, discuss a certain market structure using number of firms, your answer can either be those three options, many, few, or one. The next one is the nature of product. With the nature of product, we also have only three possibilities. A product can either be homogeneous, heterogeneous, or unique. Uh, a homogeneous product is a product that is identical. They would mean you cannot tell the difference between what uh, uh, producer A and producer B are producing. For instance, farmers, they produce maize, let's say for instance, uh, maize for, for example. Now, you cannot distinguish maize that farmer A produces with maize that farmer B produces. You will see that they, you won't find farmers trying to differentiate their maize. A farmer trying to make his maize white, uh, uh, pink or, or purple or any other color, you will see that maize is either white or yellow. That's it. Okay. Uh, a heterogeneous product is a product that is differentiated. Uh, there you normally find it in, let's say, fast food outlets, uh, cold drinks, alcohol, many things like that. You will see that they are different. So different companies are making products that are differentiated. When you take a sip, you can tell this is Coca-Cola. When you take a sip, you can tell, no, Coke, because Coca-Cola is the company, Coke. You can take a sip, then you can say this is Pepsi. Now, the fact that the reason why you can tell which cold drink you're drinking is because the product is differentiated. Then last but not least, a product can also be unique. And uh, a good example is electricity. Uh, we say there's no close substitute. But yes, you may want to say um, electricity, you can substitute with solar and so on, but um, maybe not. Of course, yes, nowadays you can cook with solar, you can this, you can that. 
but there are so many things that uh, solar may not be able to do at this point in time. So we, we can always say electricity that ESCOM is producing is a unique product. The next one is control over price. We only have two possibilities there. It's either a price can be controlled or it cannot. Uh, if, if you have control over price, you are a price maker. If you don't have control over price, you are a price taker. So you'll see that certain market structures are price makers and certain market structures are price makers. The next one is barriers to entry. And there we are saying, how easy is it for a firm to enter an industry? So when it's difficult for a firm to, for a firm to enter an industry, we say entry is, is it's restricted. And if it's impossible, we say entry is blocked. But you'll find out that there is another uh, possibility, which is entry becoming free. So we have free entry in some instances. The next one is collusion. And collusion is simply uh, when firms can come together and discuss ways in which they can minimize competition amongst themselves. So, they are, um, so collusion has two possibilities when we uh, giving those characteristics of market structures. It can either be possible or impossible. But in South Africa, collusion is illegal. If a business is found uh, is 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 um, uh, found guilty of collusive behavior, that business may face um, a, a, a hefty fine, or maybe they can take away the license for the business, depending on what happened. So collusion is possible in certain inst instances, but it's illegal. The next one is availability of information. So information can either be available or not. So we say complete information or incomplete. The next one is um, in the long run. Is it possible for a firm to make economic profit? Uh, you'll see that uh, it's either a firm can make economic profit or cannot. So if the firm cannot make economic profit, it can only make normal profit. And firms that make uh, economic loss in the long run, they don't survive, so they have to exit the industry. Uh, I'm going to skip outputs. I mentioned uh, outputs is not something we should worry about. If you check here, we don't have outputs, so I'm not going to uh, talk about outputs. The next one is the demand curve. So here we're saying there are four possibilities. Uh, the demand curve can either be horizontal, uh, that means a demand curve like this. The demand curve can also be downward sloping. The demand curve can also be kinked. And the demand curve can also be downward sloping. Now, we have three, four differences, but if you look at these two, they, you think they are the same, but the difference is elasticity. And we did this one in grade 11. Okay, we can say this one is perfectly elastic. And we can say this one is inelastic. And we say this one is elastic. Okay, so we'll see as we proceed which market structure has a horizontal, an elastic, oh, inelastic, kinked, and elastic. Okay, the next one is decision making i talked about this profit in the long run okay okay the next one is decision making uh, here we are saying when a firm makes a decision in an industry uh, does it affect other firms so you will see that decision making by an individual firm is it affects firms if there are few firms in that particular industry but if there are way too many for instance farmers if farmer A decides to do this, it doesn't affect the maize industry in South Africa. But when there are few firms in an industry and one firm decides on something, it can affect other firms' decisions as well. Okay. Then uh, productive efficiency. Is it possible for a firm to achieve productive efficiency? Or it's impossible? So there you are going to see that uh, certain firms can achieve productive efficiency and certain firms cannot. The last one is allocative efficiency and that's the same 
and here mainly we are talking about the optimal the, the optimal mix of uh, resources the resource allocation can a firm achieve allocative efficiency or not so here it's a yes they can or no they cannot all right so you have homework name and discuss at least four criteria that determines the structure of a market number two is collusion possible in a perfectly competitive market motivate your answer all right so this brings us to the end of lesson number 59 i'll see you in the next lesson